Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of The Integrated Entrepreneur. We are going over current business events. I have my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? Man, moving and grooving, bro. Just another fantastic Monday in the books. I think my, my direct sentence to you when we hopped on was like, I'm taking my ass to McDonald's. I'm going to fill out an application. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> what you said days, first. man. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. And then after this you said that, pass. I said, I had a very friends and where uh, I, I felt just the same. Just so, guys, a little running inside joke here. Yeah, if, if you guys are that are operating your business, if you don't feel like burning it down and flipping burgers twice a week, you're not doing it right. I'm an overachiever, so I, I, I tend to try to feel that way at least three to four times a week just so that I can really get into the emotions of it. No, I know. No, you want you want to bask in it too for a while. Get really yeah. upset, yeah. You just and then and then make all your decisions from that place. It's a perfect place. It's the best business model out there. Get really, really pissed off and disgruntled, and then make all of your important decisions in that moment. Yeah, and post about them, and post about them. Like uh, I actually know some well, coaches that do this. You know. Yeah. But um, that's neither here nor there. Let's get into some of the biggest topics this week as it pertains to the business business and the economy. First thing I want to go over, oh, guys. Yeah. yeah, this is big. Bankruptcies are up in April 40%. Business bankruptcies are up 40% in April. What does that tell you? Keith, what does that tell you, bud? Oh, man. I mean, without knowing, I would say the first thing is that liquidity and leverage planning didn't exist. Mm -hmm. I would say that they were probably highly over leveraged. Right. Chance. And I would also say that most of those businesses have probably never experienced an economic cycle that we're in. Yeah. So they, they didn't know what to do to, to prepare. I think those three things are pretty common. Yeah. Um, when we're talking to clients and, and shit today, it's like, that's, that's the thing, man, we're hurting and it's not industry specific either. It's really across all industries. Everyone's feeling a little bit of the pressure. So I, I think it's just um, poor planning and over being over leveraged in debt. Yeah. So I, I I do think some of it's industry specific. Here's why: I think I see a little bit more from a wider range of industries. And what I'm noticing is if it involves discretionary income, it's down. Okay, mm -hmm. so anything in retail, anything that isn't a absolute necessity. I'm seeing across the industry, it's down. Now, there could be people in that industry that are crushing it. Right. And if they are, and if you are, that's great. That means you probably figured out something that the rest of the industry or your competition has. It. You either excel in service, marketing, fulfillment, sales, or all of it. And that's why you're thriving. Okay. And right. so a couple things for you guys that haven't been through cycles like this. Uh, I got my teeth wet in this type of environment, which was 2008, and it's not really the same because it's a, it's falling and failing for different reasons. It's still a hard uh, uh, environment to operate in, and it's not easy, but each one of these downturns is always going to have its own flavor, if you will. There's always going to be some contributing factors, like in 08, it was all mortgages. Now, it's the amount of money we printed and gave away and it's the inflation and it is consumers not having any of that discretionary income, like I said. So here's, yeah. here's what I would tell you. This is absolutely true. It's absolutely alarming. And if you op if you're operating a business now, I would be really drilling down into one, knowing your numbers, understanding year over year differences. Okay. Are you going up, down, staying the same? And then I would take a real assessment of what you can do better and start executing it at a higher level. Okay. Figure out what you can do to get your clients coming back. Okay. A lot of times it's much easier to make clients come back than it is to get new clients in the door. Okay. So if you're in one of those periods right now where sales are off, you need to be very, very creative and work very hard to figure out what you can do to bring in repeat business. And then after you figure that out, and only after you figure it out, then go try to approach and attack new business. 
Okay, solve one thing first before you move on to the next problem that you want to solve. All right. It's like you go in through a, a wall, a whole room that needs to be completely re sheetrocked. And all you're doing is every time you see a dent or hole, you're just putting a little bit of spackle there. You're not putting the whole thing there. Well, guess what? It's going to look like shit at the end. Finish the job that you're working on and then go to the next hole. Keith, I, can, what I can get down behind that. I like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Everyone's got ADHD and OCD and all the letters of the alphabet, and that's how we all operate, right? Um, and it's really easy to, easy to get distracted on something new, right? Because yeah. we are uh, a, now a society of uh, very easily – um, distracted individuals, if you will. Uh, so, you know, with that, I don't know that that solves, uh, you know, the problem that most of these companies are running into. You know, I, I made a post this morning on Facebook and the reality is this man, no one, the, the word budget isn't used anymore. No, not in the personal world, not in the business world. Uh, and if, I, you know, my opinion behind that is the moment they came out with debit cards, mm -hmm. we no longer felt the pain of exchanging cash for goods, yeah. right? Like back in the day when I was a kid, right? You remember going to the store, buying something, giving them money and getting change back. You know, as an adult back then, I would assume like if I went to the store today and I handed you 200 bucks and you handed me a 10 back with a pair of shoes, like I think about that way different than I do slide in the Amex. Yep. You know what I mean? or hitting the buy now button because we have become a world of consumers and the mm -hmm. easier I can buy something, the more likely I am to buy it regardless of my financial situation outside. Because what do we do you know, as business owner owners? Most people operate off the balance sheet. Yeah. Right. Hey, if there's money in the bank, I have enough money to buy this thing. Well, they're not thinking about accounts receivable and they're not thinking about accounts payable. They're not thinking about all this shit coming on the road. We end up in April. Mm -hmm. Let's file bankruptcy because we can't dig our way out of this bitch because we've we've screwed off too long. Uh, and, and that's the sad reality of, you know, partially, uh, I would say a decent percentage of those companies were just on piss poor management, not anything else. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the environment, the economics, what war we're funding fucking today or what country we're sending billions of dollars to. You know, so... I think the, the, the problem is that we're just not fucking yeah. paying attention to what we need to pay attention to. And that, the heartbeat of my business is money. Yeah. Now let's flip that quarter. I know some companies right now that are balling out of control, yeah. taking advantage of every scenario, every situation and or cash cows right now because they're paying attention to the heartbeat of the economy and their cash to then figure out, okay, the economy is weak in this area. There's a big buying opportunity. Let's deploy capital there, right? Or mm -hmm. let's cut this operation down and put more behind this operation. It's not a new operation, but it's a different division within their departments that can generate more revenue based on their attentiveness to that. And so there's a couple <coughs> ways to look at it, right? No one wants to say, yeah, it was just ooh, raise my hand. It was me on piss poor, you know, budgeting. <laughs> Uh, or I screwed up in this marketing avenue and spent too much money or whatever, enter here. <laughs> there is always opportunity to make a profit. You just have to understand where to look. And when I say that, that doesn't mean you have to, quote, know anything, right? There's no specific formula or no, no black web, dark web fucking login that you should have to, to get by. You just need to be prepared to not do the bougie shit right now. Yeah. You got to be prepared, you know, my situation, sell the Ferrari, sell the boat, sell a bunch of shit that you don't have to have today to tighten the balance sheet up. Not because I had to, right? Because I know that 10 grand a month or whatever my costs were for things that I've sold can be better suited, deployed in other avenues to ensure way more profit margins in the business you can always buy a Ferrari. You can always buy the boat. You can always go buy the thing. You know, that's, it's a matter of, it's, it's a matter of identifying the importance of capital in certain situations. So I love that you said that because when I went out to acquisition.com, 
<clears throat> the first day, the, what they're doing is they're teaching you how a CEO thinks. No one ever went over this with me. The CEO's job is just to allocate or reallocate the company's resources to produce the highest return. And that's exactly what you just did and shifted. And yep. so, guys, what Keith is saying is he was probably paying $10,000 a month for the boat, Ferrari, everything else. And what he did, he did the math. If he used that $10,000 a month plus the cash that he sold those assets and redeployed the, that money and those revenue streams into the business, he would obviously make a much higher return than if he kept. That's what he's talking to you guys through right now. That's huge. Okay. Yeah. I mean, here's the, here's the real example. We've bought three pieces of real estate in the past three weeks. We're cash flowing about 1800 bucks a month profit. Mm -hmm. And I was able to use creative financing to not really use any of my cash. Yeah. Right. I've also got another deal that I'm going to deploy my cash to that's going to generate 15 K a month in net income. So while it was cool in a, in a, in a dick measuring contest to have the Ferrari and the big boat on the Creek and all the fun shit, like, to me, it's even cooler to watch my net worth increase, yeah. cash flow increase. And then those things at some point in time will ultimately buy the next car, the next car. Yeah. And I won't have a depreciating asset anymore. I'll have an asset that gets paid for by appreciating assets that give me tax uh, opportunities to, to mitigate my taxes that then grow over time. And life is good. Yeah. And, a, and a cash flow. That's huge. So that, you know, I, what I heard you say was I'm better than Alex Ramosi and I should put on this class because, you know, we're teaching the same shit, right? Hey. <laughs> yeah, he explains it a little differently. Um, yeah, so, he's, he's a little bit more polished, if you will. Yeah. So n next next business event, I want, I, I'm going to go and outline it, guys. And basically, if you look at Yahoo News or Yahoo Finance, they're talking about stagflation is back meaning we have high interest rates, low liquidity, okay? Wages are not adjusting with inf and high inflation, okay? And wages are not adjusting with that, okay? It's creating a ne negative environment. One, it's going to drive down the prices of real estate. Two, okay, these environments are make it very hard to operate because it, the cost to borrowing money is expensive, and you know that inflation is further uptick. So the whole time they said, oh, inflation is transitory. This is the last couple of years. Inflation is transitory. And all of a sudden, inflation is here. And if you look back from now until 2014, inflation is actually 31%. That's huge. That's very, very substantial. Okay. Which means our dollar has lost 31% of its value. Or the cost of goods, the same goods that we could have bought in 2015, cost 31% more yeah. today. So think about it like this. Mm -hmm. If you're operating a business, have you increased your prices by 31%? Doubtful. Actually, I'm pretty sure no one has. All right. So, Keith, what do you got on stagflation? I mean, it's just, you know, there's there's some of us who, not some of us because I definitely didn't, but, you know, the 70s is another prime example of what stagflation was, right? And stagflation is rare, but it happens. It's rare, so people get caught with their pants down when the tide's out because we, you know, you and I are the same age. So since we've been born, we've gone through, from an adult perspective or from a financially um, uh from a financial perspective of where you and I were responsible of our mm -hmm. own money, we went through 08, right? Mm -hmm. And even then I wasn't uh, at a point where it was like, oh man, this is, this is hard for me. Like I wasn't, you know, we didn't have a bunch of expenses back then. We were able to get by. I was making okay money back then. So it wasn't a big deal. So I didn't pay much attention to it because it wasn't painful. Right. And I think, Unfortunately, for, for in order to catch someone's attention, shit has to hurt. Yeah. Um, because I've had the the ability to learn finance, and I've been in the game a little while, I prepared for this without even knowing that I prepared for it through liquidity and and the ability to leverage capital and assets. Right. Mm -hmm. So, 
my situation may be a little bit different than the rest of the world, but the reality is we've got high ass interest rates. We've got a declining workforce. We've got, you know, uh, piss poor budgeting by cities and municipalities in the country. And what's the saying, right? Shit flows downhill. Yeah. Okay. Shit flows downhill. So it affects high income earners, but it affects the middle class way more. And it crushes the lower class. It destroys those people, right? Who are unfortunately in that situation where they don't have the ability to get out and do things that you and I have the privilege. And, and I say this with sentiment. I don't say it to be a dick. That's who gets the brunt. Yeah. Right. And some people have a way to get out of it. Some people have a way to dodge it, but the lower class, the middle class are really the punching bag for the government and their yeah. piss poor budgets and spending. And so because of that, uh, the shittiest president in my existence has caused stagflation. And now all the fucking naysayers are going to go, well, this has been going on for 20 years and it's finally caught up to us. Well, I don't know. Trump was in fucking the, the White House. Shit was OK. Yeah, it may not have been the best. He may have had Twitter fingers or whatever the fucking complaint was by all the snowflakes out there. But the reality behind the true math, mm-hmm. the economy was strong. Yeah. Well, Until we it ain't strong down. anymore. No. True. Yeah. There's always going to be a blocker at some level, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I say I'll have to say this. We're in a really fucked up spot as a country. We're sending mm-hmm. trillions of dollars overseas to fund wars that we have no fucking reason to be involved in. We've got a bunch of homeless motherfucking veterans here in the United States that can't get a handout. Yep. We've got suicide rates through the roof, drug rates through the roof. Like, there's so many bigger problems than stagflation, but stagflation's the cool thing, right? That's, oh, we're in stagflation. My opinion is a lot of people hold that term and they say, ah, that's the excuse of why I'm going to continue acting like a shithead because we got stagflation. Everyone's down. I'm down. Everyone's down. When we should think the other way of like, how the fuck do we come together as a unit, as a country, and take this bitch back over and fix it? Yeah. And it's far-fetched, right? It's not going to happen. Far-fetched, at least not in my lifetime. I'll be long gone before that shit happens. But, my, you know, that's just – it's it's been – it's not just what we've done today. It's it's happened over the past three and a half years, yeah. four years, right? And it's and it's now we are where we're at, and we deserve it because uh, we're followers as a country. We're, we're no longer strong and independent and we're the laughing stock and, and now we're paying for it. Right. Yes. Um, how do we turn this thing around is the question. I mean, right? I, what's I, it going to take? It's not a new president. It's not a, a new president. Isn't going to fix it. No. If Trump gets back in, obviously he knows a lot of things that get uh, economics wise to push us in a better direction. Yeah. But I, it's not just on him. I think what you or getting that. It, guys, people, everyone wants to look for an excuse. Whether it's stagflation, the current president, yes, was one markedly better than the other. Yeah, Trump was way better. Biden isn't even running it. If any, if you've ever watched, you, you know he's not running the show. And this whole thing is a joke, okay? But I want to focus on things that we can control as people. Taking personal accountability, I think, is a lot of where we are failing, right? Think about how far we've come as, as a society. Like the things that would keep my parents up and the things that we were taught are not the same things today that are being done and implemented, all right? We stopped taking personal accountability. We started looking for people and places and things to blame. And the reality is no one here is going to fix it for you. No one here is going to save the day. The only person that can save the day, save your ass, save your company, save your team is the guy that you're looking at in the mirror. Okay. When more people realize that and when more people just start 
doing the right thing. Like, why can't we make that a trend? Why can't we make that what's in and what's cool today? Mm -hmm. Just doing the right thing and looking out for each other. If we started there, we'd be a lot further ahead. And then the last business topic, last business topic I want to touch on quick, okay, is business credit cards or, or business debt as it pertains to credit cards is up almost 20% in April. Okay. Now 20% is that is, it? Well, yeah. But when you think about it for one month, that's substantial. Yeah. I mean, and it's a here, lot, but I, I, yeah. I thought it would be a lot more. I thought so too. And this is telling me to about 20%, 18 to 20% in one month. And why that's staggering guys is that means it goes back to what Keith was saying that businesses and entrepreneurs are not budgeting. They're not planning. Okay. There's nothing wrong with using your credit cards, guys. All right. And I'm going to save you guys a lot of time, effort, energy, aggravation. You have business cards, pay off whatever the statement is. When you see the statement date, pay it two or three days before and pay the statement balance off. If you do that, your utilization will stay low. Okay, your credit score will consistently stay higher and you don't have to worry about when you pay, when you, when you're paying your bills. If you know you have to pay it two days before the statement date and you're paying off the statement, at least the statement balance, if if not more. OK, you won't run into these issues. All right. And another reason why this is happening, guys, is because businesses are don't have the money. OK, they don't have access to enough cap. OK. Sure. If your credit cards are up as a business, probably means that you either don't have a line of credit or you're not using it properly. All right. It takes 24 to 48. Longest it takes to open a line of credit is 72 hours. If you need help with that, come see me or anyone else that can help you with it. All right. And if this is happening in your business, okay, and you notice that your credit card bills are up, the first thing you need to do is figure out, well, am I not charging enough? Okay, if you if you are noticing that money is getting tighter and tighter at the end of every month, that should be a clear indication that you might need to charge more. And the reason I'm telling you that is because most of you don't look at your financial statements or have them ready at the end of the month. You guys are doing the bank statement accounting, which means you look at your bank, you see what's in there. Can I afford it? Yes. Okay, I'm going to pull the trigger. You shouldn't be doing that ever. You should always be looking at your financials. If you are noticing that you're getting thinner and thinner at the end of every single month, it's definitely time to raise your prices. These are all things, every single business event that we have covered here, there is a response that you could deploy as an operator to help move your business forward. There is nothing yeah. here that says that you guys are stuck. We are pointing out potential speed bumps. We're pointing out potential pitfalls and we're giving you the blueprint on how to get around them. Okay. And so if you're noticing that your credit card bills are up, one, get a line of credit. Two, if, if you don't have the money in your account to pay them, you're probably not charging enough. Keith, you got anything else on that? No, uh, I think those are good. Uh, last thing, if, if you're, we're mentioning banks. Yeah. I think the latest stats is 282 banks are uh, at dual threat of closing down uh, and becoming insolvent because of high interest rates and a shit ton of commercial assets that people owe money on. Yep. And so this has been a discussion and multiple you know, uh, conversations lately of what do we do as the business owner and as a consumer uh, for that? Uh, and I don't say this to just scare a bunch of people into a bunch of banks failing and the economy collapsing, but the reality is there's banks that fail every day. Uh, mm -hmm. We just don't hear about it. If you are in a small regional bank or a local credit union, you may want to look at the bigger, maybe one of the top five banks as a parking spot for some capital. Um, and I don't mean go rip the Band-Aid off and move all your money and all that, but we're, 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 we're telling a lot more people these days to, to go to your Vistar, to your Bank of America, uh, 
if you are in fact in one of these smaller mom and pop type regional banks, the reality is to your point, like people aren't paying attention. The bank eats that. You overdraft your, your account, what happens? Someone's got to pay, put money in your account, right? Yeah. Like you owe the bank at that point in time. And if you and, you know, half of the damn people, members of the bank are doing that, like that's where shit in the fan collides. So it's not just business. It's not just being a consumer. It's not just spending the money. It's also like utilizing the proper financial institutions in times like this. Yeah. The very last thing you want, which if your bank shuts down, it's probably not going to be too much of a direct impact to you because there's protections in place until there isn't. Right. And yeah. th- at some point in time, protection runs out. So mm-hmm. I think to wrap this conversation up is just, you, know, you need to do a better financial audit. You need to look at the whole picture, not just what are you spending? That's just a piece of the budget. Where are you holding money? Where are your assets at? How available are they? How much can you put your hands on in 24 hours? And if you find that those answers aren't exciting to you, you need to do some research on what's available. To your point, like lines of credit, home equity line of credit, get access to money as a business owner. Would you rather go out of business because you run out of money or would you rather utilize a 12% interest line of credit to save your shit? Yeah. But if you don't have that line of credit available, you can't get it when the shit starts hitting the fan. You're fucked. Yeah. And you're shutting your door. Yeah. And so best time, most it's the best times now. Right. And, And we talk about all the time, like when, when we're most of the best companies created in a time of financial stress in this country. And so we're repeating all that shit. It's just, there's opportunity here. This isn't negative. There's a lot of people out there blowing all the negative smoke. This is a great opportunity, not only to realign your vision with your financial goals, but to really bulletproof your organization and, and your practice on how you treat yourself, your money, your assets in these times. So do some internal research, ask the hard questions, get pissed off with yourself, but only do that to a point where it motivates you to fix it. Yep. Yeah. A couple of things on this guys. Best time to apply for a line of credit is when you don't need it. Keep. And uh, I do want to add guys, the commercial real estate that is, is taking these bank banks down, like Keith said and suggested, that's a real thing that people that I pay money to, to listen and to be coached by told me about a year ago. And it's sh- it, the cracks are definitely showing. So number one, uh, don't have any more money than the FDIC insures in any one account. And two, move to some of the majors. I like Chase. Okay, Chase is great. Hope this helped you guys. Leave us a review and sh- share this with someone who needs to hear it. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.